member for Prince Albert. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to talk about the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement, or CAFTA, uh, specifically the benefits and opportunities created by the agreement for the Canadian beef and pork farmers. Canadian beef and Canadian beef and pork are world-renowned and is a significant contributor to our national economy. In every region of our country, hard-working beef and pork producers reliable and high-quality products that are constantly in high demand. Look at the numbers. The size of the industry is staggering. By 2014, there were 12.2 million head of cattle and over 82,000 Canadian farms and ranches. In the pork sector, there were approximately 12.9 million hogs on over 7,000 farms. Our government, along with Canadian beef and pork producers, understand that Canada's prosperity requires expansion beyond our borders into new markets for economic opportunities that serve to grow Canada's exports and investments. While the United States is a major export market for Canadian beef and pork, diversification and ensuring that Canadian farmers have access to a wide range of export products, export markets for their products is very key to their success. That is why most recent speech from the throne committed to expanding trade in the Asia-Pacific region to benefit hard-working Canadians and businesses, especially our crucial small and medium-sized enterprises and industries across the Canada. South Korea represents a significant market for beef and pork, and there exists much potential for increased Canadian exports. Between 2010 and 2012, South Korea's global imports totaled an average of approximately 1.3 billion annually, while global pork imports were worth an average of approximately 1.1 billion annually. Currently, Canada supplies only a fraction of South Korea's beef and pork markets. Canada's market share is also currently falling due to the competitive disadvantage via the, with the United States and the European Union, who benefit from lower tariffs and preferential access due to their FTA that they presently have with South Korea. Specifically, following the implementation of the Korea-US or Korea-EU FTAs, Canada's share of South Korean fresh chilled frozen pork imports dropped from 14.2% in 2010 to 8.9% in 2013, representing a loss of export value in excess of $22 million. During the same period, US and EU market share increased from 66 to 76%. In 2012, following the resumption of Canada's access to South Korea's beef market, Canada's fresh chilled frozen beef exports to South Korea were valued at around $10 million. However, in 2013, Canadian beef exports declined to $6.7 million as a result of growing tariff differential, again, via U.S. Comp competition. Our Conservative government is committed to leveling the playing field and opening new markets for high-quality Canadian beef and pork as Canada's first free trade agreement in Asia. The Canada Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement provides critical new market access opportunities in a dynamic region where there is significant demand for both beef and pork. Starting with beef, exports to South Korea of fresh chilled frozen beef, which totaled over 43 million in 2002 prior to BSC outbreak, are in the rebuilding phase following the restoration access to the South Korean market in 2012. Canada's exports of beef to South Korea reached an average of 5.5 million from 2011 to 2013, while exports of bovine genetics, offal, tallow, averaged are over $15 million. Importantly, the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement will eliminate high tariffs that serve as a barrier to, for increased Canadian exports, specifically the 40% tariff on fresh chilled and frozen beef cuts, as well as the 72% tariff on some processed and prepared beef will be eliminated within 15 years. Tariffs of 18% on most beef offal will be eliminated within 11 years, while tariffs on beef fats and tallow will be eliminated upon entry into force of the free trade agreement. In addition, the 18% tariff on embryos will be eliminated upon entry into force. Beef stakeholders from across the country have unanimously and publicly supported this agreement. These include the Canadian Cattlemen's Association, the Canadian Meat Council, Manitoba Beef Producers, BC Cattlemen's Association, Alberta Beef Producers, Saskatchewan Stock Growers Association, and Beef Farmers of Ontario. Martin Unruh, past president of the Canadian Cattlemen's Association, said, and I quote, this announcement means Canadian beef will be able to compete for meaningful access in the South Korean market. Our pork, Canada's export of fresh chilled frozen pork to South Korea, reached an average of $138 million from 2011 to 2013, while exports of processed pork, pork offal, and fats reached $9 million during the same period. Although Canadian pork farmers are already exporting to South Korea, high tariffs remain for many of the pork products they produce. Thus, there is remaining significant untapped potential for this industry to export to South Korea, potential that can only be accessed through a tariff elimination pursuant to the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement. Under the agreement, the 22.5% and 25% <laughs> tariffs on fresh, chilled, and frozen pork cuts will be eliminated within 5 to 13 years. The 18 to 30% tariffs on most processed and prepared pork will be eliminated within 6 years. 
as well as the 18% tariff on pork offal will be eliminated within five years, while the 3% tariff on pig fats and oils will be eliminated upon entry into force on the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement. In addition to the industry associations mentioned above, the key pork stakeholders across the country have publicly voiced their support for this agreement, including the Canadian Pork Council, Canadian Pork International, Eleveuse de Pork de Quebec, Alberta Pork, Maple Leaf Foods, Olimel, High Life, and the Canadian Agri-Food Trade Alliance. This agreement also recognizes the integrated nature of this industry in the North American economy, provides the rules of origin that will allow these world-class products to benefit from preferential treatment in South Korea. The important as allowing Canada to continue and compete as with other exports of beef and pork to South Korea, including the United States and European Union, competitors that have benefited from lower tariffs since the implementation of their own respective free trade agreements with South Korea. Take what Michael McCain, President and CEO of Maple Leaf Foods said, and I quote, agreement is a major win for Canada's agri-food industry. Shamefully, despite all the evidence that trade creates jobs, economic growth, economic security for hard-working Canadian families, the NDB, together with its activist groups and allies, is always ide ideologically opposed to trade. Just as bad are the Liberals who, during the 13 years in power, completely neglected trade. The Liberals took Canada virtually out of the game in trade negotiations, putting Canadian workers and businesses at severe risk of falling behind the era of global markets. In these uncertain times, our prosperity depends on our ability to take advantage of economic opportunities in emerging markets. Not only does the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement provide robust outcomes for Canadian beef and pork farmers, but it allows Canada to level the playing field with key competitors and reverse the decline in beef and pork exports to South Korea. Our government understands the importance of trade to our economy. It represents one, of our, one out of every five jobs in Canada and accounts for more than 60% of our country's annual income. Any delay in ratifying this agreement will place Canadian farmers at a further disadvantage against their competitors and Canadian jobs and opportunities. As Australia is nearing implementation of their own FTA with South Korea, there's even a greater urgency for Canada to implement the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement and gain preferential access as soon as possible, so as to establish even stronger footholds in this most important export market. In order to support Canadian farmers and expand their export opportunities, the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement needs to be passed now. This will create jobs and opportunities and contribute significantly to Canada's long-term economic growth and prosperity. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, questions and comments, uh, l'honorable député de Marcoil Fautin. Monsieur le Président, je remercie mon distingué confrère pour uh, ses remarques, mais j'ai noté aussi sa, un, un élément de son discours où il indiquait le dernier discours du trône de ce gouvernement. Euh, je me souviens bien que dans ce dernier discours du trône du gouvernement, il y avait une référence sur le fait qu'ils allaient interdire aux entreprises de facturer un supplément pour les gens qui payaient par l'entremise de la Poste. On attend toujours. Et c'est ça qui est le problème, Monsieur le Président. On ne cesse d'attendre ce gouvernement qu'il fasse les actions en faveur des Canadiens, à savoir les gens, pas seulement les entreprises. Et c'est là que tout se pose le problème. Depuis l'arrivée de ce gouvernement au pouvoir, le secteur manufacturier a perdu 500 000 emplois. Nous, ce qu'on aime faire et savoir, c'est qu'est-ce que vous allez faire de cette entente qui peut être très bonne pour s'assurer qu'il y ait une réindustrialisation du Canada et non pas que le Canada soit simplement un fournisseur de matières premières, même pas transformé. Merci, Monsieur le Président. The Honourable Member for Prince Albert. Well, I thank the, the member for his question. You know, this is the government that bring in, brought in close to 1.2 net. 1.2 million net new jobs since the global recession. This is the government that reduces taxes and families that provides some $3,200 additional benefit to the average family. You know, one thing that the NDP doesn't understand is companies employ Canadians. So if you give market access to companies or to farmers who are Canadians, you actually improve their chances of employing more Canadians or allow farmers to take advantage of higher prices so they too can expand their operations and have a better quality of life. I wish the NDP would get this. They just don't seem to understand what trade really means for Canada. Uh, question and comment, uh, l'honorable député de uh, Rosemont-La Petite-Petrie. Uh, merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. 
Euh, je pense que ce que mon collègue d'en face du Parti conservateur ne comprend pas, c'est qu'on vote en faveur de l'accord avec la Corée du Sud. Alors, je ne vois pas quel reproche il peut bien nous faire en ce moment. J'aurais par contre une question à lui poser euh, et une préoccupation qui, qui concerne des, au moins 100 000 travailleurs au Canada, des emplois bien payés. On a une préoccupation qui concerne le secteur de l'automobile, M. le Président, vis-à-vis -vis les voitures coréennes. Et on veut savoir quel est le plan du gouvernement pour protéger le secteur économique de construction de voitures au Canada, pour soutenir ces emplois-là face à la concurrence coréenne. Qu'est-ce que son gouvernement propose pour défendre les emplois canadiens? The Honourable Member for Prince Albert. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know what? One thing I find very interesting about farmers. When farmers make money, they buy things. They buy vehicles, they buy cars, they buy trucks, they buy tractors, they buy combines. They re reinvest in their farming operations. Where are those jobs located that make those types of products? In Ontario, in the manufacturing sector. So as you strengthen the agriculture sector, thus you strengthen the manufacturing sector that provides input into the agriculture sector. I think they'd understand that, then they'd vote even more aggressively on more free trade agreements. Uh, questions and comments? Question, l'honorable député de Laurentie de Merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, les petites pointes de mon collègue de l'autre côté euh, euh, me font pas souffrir beaucoup parce que je comprends l'ensemble de réflexes que tout le Parti conservateur a développé à réciter des formules puis lire des notes de la Chambre. Mais il y a des choses qu'il faudrait qu'ils comprennent quand il dit que le NPD ne comprend pas. Je vais donner un exemple de choses que eux comprennent pas. La Corée, euh, il fabriquait des, des copies des anciennes Toyota Corolla sur les vieilles chaînes de montage qu'il avait achetées des Japonais. C'était d'une qualité douteuse. Aujourd'hui, ils sont devenus l'avant-garde de l'industrie automobile à cause qu'ils ont développé des stratégies industrielles sérieuses puis qui ont fait des investissements en recherche et développement. Ce ne serait pas le fun que le gouvernement apprenne de ces leçons-là? Merci, M. le Président. Uh, the Honourable Member for Prince Albert. But again, I thank the member for his question. Again, one thing a free trade agreement does is it brings in force rules that actually, uh, uh, rules that are put in place for both parties to follow so they understand uh, what they can or can't do. And of course, patent protections and, and licensing agreements follow into those types of rules. You know, again, it comes back to the Canadian farmers and producers, which is I talked about here today. You know, when they look at this agreement, when they look at the benefits, when they understand what can happen when a market gets shut down, like happened to our beef producers when the U.S. closed the border with the uh, BSC, or if you looked at country of origin labeling, which the frustrations they've been experiencing there, they get it. They understand that the more market access they have around the world, the more chance they can sell all the products that they produce. So when you're taking a cow and you're actually looking at uh, marketing parts of the steaks to Canada, parts of the, the beef to uh, the U.S., parts to Asia, parts to the Middle East, they need a variety of markets to take the different types of cuts that come from a cow. So of course, this is the type of advantages you get from a free trade agreement, is you allow to get efficiently used to the entire animal and sell what you can or the most effective uh, amount of the product or byproducts to all these varieties of markets that have these different needs and different desires. This is one thing that the North Korea free, or the South Korea Free Trade Agreement, I was thinking the NDP were supporting the North Korea Free Trade Agreement, which we haven't done. Uh, so that's why I was kind of confused when they, uh, when they were supporting this agreement. I thought they must have heard the word North instead of South, but it's actually the South Korea Free Trade Agreement. And this is a really good agreement for, our, for Canadian farmers, Canadian producers, and I think everybody should get behind it for sure.